corruption in emerging markets and fragile democracies undermines the confidence of citizens and investors alike, while responsible governance helps to foster sustainable economic development and political stability. You know curbing corruption is a serious global challenge, and so it will take global partnerships to meet it. It is the fact that greed fuels the whole system. And with this greed, of course, you know, there are no morals and the weak and poor tend to suffer. The victims of corruption are the poor, and the poorer countries are the victims. Countries like Equatorial Guinea that are making so much money now. It is sad to see that side by side to such opulence, there is real poverty and suffering. I mean, it, it has to stop somewhere. Anybody who is given a bribe, it's actually taken from the money belonging to the poor people of that particular country. It's their own money. So fundamentally what is going on is, first and foremost, you are stealing from the poorest of the poor. And you are taking money that ought to go for their own well-being, for their own development. There is no way for them to take care of their own problems. If the little thing that they have, you are also participating in stealing it. The main price is being paid by the people. The people who suffer from bad economic management, who uh, see their countries, their societies fall into poverty, into desperation, into uh, conflicts, into violence. They are the ones who pay the heftiest price. But of course, the price is also paid by honest companies who are out bribed by others. The price is paid by governments which are trying to introduce uh, democracy and accountability um, and uh, are the victims of a few uh, corrupt, but very often very powerful people among them. So the price is paid by all of us. There is a need for strong political will by the leaders and, and uh, uh, policy makers of, uh, of a country in, a, uh, in order to fight all forms of corruption including this, including the uh, bribery of you know, foreign uh, public officials uh, in international business transactions. This is the difficulty of fighting corruption when there is no political will and leadership at the highest level in doing that. Uh, if you do not get the extreme, the powerful, I mean the force of government behind you, uh, those of you, the little ones who are doing it, will certainly be vulnerable. Ten years ago, the U.S. was alone in this effort to criminalize uh, corruption in international business. It was the OECD convention that caused our uh, OECD colleagues, member countries, um, to, for the first time, criminalize payment of um, bribes in international business. If you had no convention, you would not have had a Siemens case. If you would have no convention, you would not have uh, the SFO uh, starting an investigation on BAA as they announced on 1st October 2009. Now, is this enough? Is this to say that all the cases of foreign bribery are effectively investigated and prosecuted? No, certainly not. But if you look at the trend, you now have more and more cases investigated and prosecuted. You have company sanctions, you have individual in jails, and this would not have happened if the convention would not have been in place. Ten years ago, OECD members brought the anti-bribery convention into force, a milestone in global efforts to encourage responsible and accountable governance. We are taking steps to strengthen the convention with a revised recommendation that includes new guidelines and best practices that will help governments provide effective enforcement mechanisms and help businesses develop robust internal controls and compliance provisions. Mm -hmm.